we can lose badge grades every game, but you want the shooting to be realistic. We have, we got people running around this park on pogo sticks, ladies and gentlemen. You can buy your way to level 40 and you can get what they call floor setters to set the floor for your badges so that they don't drop below a certain level. So I can buy that day one. I can buy 40. I can buy two cap, two floor setters to set the floors for my badges. But shooting is where we draw the line. A bullshit? Come on, 2K. Check this out, chat. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let y'all know off top. Half of y'all trash at the game. The other half are being controlled. Okay, I'm not saying that there's foul play afoot, but we're definitely being scammed in one way or another. Let's put it like this. Everything is not what it seems in the 2K community. Now, when it comes to the topic of shooting, there's definitely some foul play afoot. This man here, this clean cut gentleman here had this to say. What we have to talk about is something that is very controversial when it comes to 2K24, and it's the fact that your jump shot has a predetermined miss in the game. Basically, Mike Wayne came out on Reddit and he said one of the goals for shooting this year was to get the shot percentages more in line with NBA averages, definitely lower than what we've seen in the past couple of years. So if you now that that is something I cannot understand, why would we for the life of us want real life percentages for jump shooting? That means that when I take an open shot in this video game, I have a higher chance of missing an open shot after I did the work to get open. Now, if I break my defender down, I expect to hit the shot. If I don't break my defender down and he's close enough to stop me from shooting, then, then I should have a problem. If you're shooting 40 to 50% from three, you're doing really well. If you're in the 30s, you're still hitting targets for a decent shooter. Just want everyone to adjust their expectations that averaging below 60% is normal and by design. Keyword. Now, this design is flawed in my opinion. And adjusting my expectations is exactly what I would want someone to do if I were pulling the wool over their eyes. That's just the story, the way I catch it. Now, if you pair this with the latency issues that we're having, the spikes of lag and the choppiness in the parks, it would make one think, well, what it makes me think personally is that they cannot adjust for the latency between Xbox and PlayStation. And they're making up for the terrible shooting by saying that there is, by design, their effort to make shooting more realistic. I don't believe any of this. I believe it's a farce and I believe it's because they cannot compensate for the lag discrepancy between consoles. This is something that I stated in my earlier videos when we talked about pro play and when I addressed cross play, I said that who knows if Xbox will be able to keep up with PlayStation and who knows if the sliders for latency can be adjusted correctly. Now, this is just my take on it. I could be wrong, but I could be right. And if I'm wrong, I could have been right. So I could be right. So I'm still right, but I'm wrong, but I could be right. So who knows if I'm right or wrong? The only people that really know the truth are the people down at 2K who make the game and adjust all of the numbers. And they'll never tell us if their sliders can't be good enough for crossplay. Hopefully, if I am right about these sliders, they can adjust them later on down the line or maybe for the next iteration in 2K25, we can have better sliders going forward with crossplay. Or if it's an issue that just can't be addressed yet because there's not enough technology at this point, then 
I believe it would be fair to address it by letting the community know exactly what's going on instead of letting us waste our money on things that we might not really want to waste our money on. At this point, I've come up with the idea of just building an inside center and running like that. I mean, I've had a pretty good time shooting in the rec center. It hasn't been too bad in there. And I haven't tested out other game modes to really put forth a really solid established point of view to let you guys know exactly what I think about shooting in other arenas. But down the line, when I do get into the pro-am situation and I do figure those things out, I'll let you know how I feel about the latency in there. That's just my take on it going forward. Let's address some more. Now, I heard this bald man speak and I'm gonna let you hear what he has to say about the matchmaking. This hot take from iPod blew my well, mind. As far as it goes for matchmaking, since I'm talking about that first, matchmaking in NBA 2K24 is not a problem. I haven't seen any matchmaking issues at all. I've played against people that are on Xbox, which have a little crossplay symbol. I'm guessing on Xbox, we have the same crossplay symbol as well since I'm on PS5. And I've also played Xbox players in the park and I've had Xbox teammates in the park and the rec as well. So I don't see any matchmaking issues there. Crossplay is actually a huge W. Now this here, for some reason, he's giving me pinky doll vibes. <laughs> gang 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 mm, ice cream good and it seems like he's being held hostage by 2k in that little basement and being forced to make these videos and say these things because this is the hottest take i've ever heard when it comes to nba 2k when i first booted up the game with high hopes things were good Shortly after, I realized that matchmaking, while we can get into these games perfectly fine and we can hook up and get there, the latency is terrible. There is no room for error at some points, but at certain points, all you can do is expect for the game to chop or for there to be just delay, desync. You can feel how unsynchronized you are on the court and only because I understand it is where I can make room to adjust my gameplay to the the differences between what the player next to me is doing and what I'm doing and I mean I don't know where to go from there but the most I can say is it's all going to be trial and error until they figure out the servers now this may be a hot take for me you can you can feel like this is a hot take or like i'm just talking out of my hind parts but i can't deny what i feel on court now i run enough internet speed for my connection to be pristine but for me to feel like i'm walking on air at certain points or like i'm stuck in mud or like the game is slow or like i can't shoot is ridiculous and it all has to come down to how well these two consoles sync up together. I've never felt like this while just playing Xbox players. The only time you feel this is in cross-play games. You can feel it in Call of Duty. You definitely can feel it in Call of Duty. Sometimes you just feel like a marshmallow. You feel like you're in a fever dream and there's really nothing that you can do to move fast enough are to lock in and get the right timing on your situational awareness. Now, when I get to a certain point, I just have to turn the game off and calm my nerves. But that's a whole nother story. Now, this gentleman here had more input on the situation and I'm gonna let you hear what he has to say about it right here. An open shot should be considered an open shot and you should get rewarded for breaking down the defense and having that open shot opportunity. The reason why you was open is because the defense got broken down. Mike Wang has admitted within this tweet that by design, you're gonna be missing open shots so that way you can maintain real life shooting percentages. That's 
to me sounds like an RIP to shooting as we know it on 2K. There is a level of RNG that has been put into the game and it's by design that they don't want you to shoot well. They want you to shoot like a real NBA player. They want it to be real life. I can find several arguments that go against that, that logic. I can find several cartoony instances in the game. Um, I mean, the bad system, that goes against that concrete. That's concrete, that goes against that. We can lose badge grades every game but you want the shooting to be realistic. We have, we got people running around this park on pogo sticks, ladies and gentlemen. You can buy your way to level 40 and you can get what they call floor setters to set the floor for your badges so that they don't drop below a certain level. So I can buy that day one, I can buy 40, I can buy two cap, two floor setters to set the floors for my badges, but shooting is where we draw the line. Come on, 2K. That is just, that sounds to me like it's just an excuse for you guys not knowing how to, not being able to, excuse me, let me get my verbiage right because I'm not coming at you guys sideways or backwards. This is just my opinion on the situation. And I really wanna break this down piece by piece to understand what's going on here. I believe that you can't account for the server adjustments at this point. So to save face, we're just gonna come out with a side story that we want shooting to be realistic, but we want this ridiculous badge system to prevail. I mean, at a certain point, we gotta call a spade a spade and that's my spade. I hope you guys got something from this. I hope you guys can take something from that and weigh out between what's real and what's not in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about the badge system and about this shooting system where we're shooting so realistic now. Um, hey, that's what it is. How bullshit? Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer.